from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the WOW Report. I'm Fenton Bailey, co-founder of World of Wonder, joined by my inestimable colleagues, Tom Campbell, our Chief Creative Officer. Hello, hello, hello. And Jane St. James, editor of the WOW Report. And a very special guest this week, a warm welcome back to Alec Mappa. Thank Woo! you, thank you. Don't get up. I'm so gate crashing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're going to chime in and steal the thunder. I oh, think. listen, I'll, I'll I'll try not to shine too brightly. I, I know how <laughs> problematic that is on this on this particular podcast. <laughs> Sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you know what we do? We count down the top ten things of the week that made us go wow, and we <laughs> normally start at number ten, and that's where we'll start this week. Number ten. My number ten is personal. As I told you, I, I came to the end of the week of hosting my brother and my nephew mm. here in Los Angeles, my nine-year-old nephew's first trip to Los Angeles. We tried, and I think successfully spoiled him rotten, just like VIP access, you know, pools on roofs and everything. Pool. On Sunday, the day of nine-year-olds love a rooftop pool. Well, he it's, loves to swim, and I figured it's something he might remember when he's older. Okay. He might okay. remember um right. uh it made us feel important um cabana service you know the things kids mm. care about and um uh uh, uh on sunday i chipped in because i i skipped legoland i mm. skipped disney i really have trouble with those but i thought i haven't been to universal studios in a while so <gasps> i did the vip treatment which is less than the disney vip treatment that's okay. a lot of money and mm. i kept typing up the last minute because there was a Hurricane, more about that later. Um, I thought maybe I sh maybe they'll not be open or something. Oh, so we went in the hurricane, which means you probably didn't need the VIP pass because it was kind of empty. But we had the the sash, the the thing. The woman was lovely. You know, the the I could only imagine the failed actress Lori, who who who, who showed us around with her perfect lipstick and her mm. ability to sort of like be charming with us and a group of Koreans and a small family of Mexicans that we all got along, no language <laughs> necessary. And Brady, that's his name, was he's very self-aware and very self-possessed. And he's like, I don't like roller coasters, you know? So he's like, is this a roller coaster? What's this gonna be like? And because it's 2023 and because we paid for the VIP fancy service, she has to explain very explicitly and very calmly what each ride's going to be like, which would okay. be because you can't be thrown off because you know rich people are like, ah, I'm late and I don't care, and give you know, you made me sick. So, and and the secretly in my mind, the gay uncle, secretly in my mm -hmm. mind, I'm thinking, Brady, butch it up, let's just go. How bad could these fake roller coasters, these inside? Oh my god, those fake roller coasters, though, give me vertigo every time. They're horrible. They're All right, well, you okay? I, I kind of can see where this is going, but keep we going. Did, we did like you know the Jurassic. We did the you know, things in the in the in the van. You get to go out and go to the, the the prop shop, and it's really fun. I had a good time. We get to Harry Potter Land. Yes, here we go. There is a little mini roller coaster. I do it myself because my brother stays with Brady because Brady doesn't like roller coasters. Very self possessed. I appreciate that. Then it's time for the virtual Harry Potter ride. Mm -hmm. Which, and and th here's the other little tidbit. They said that the, the, the woman, uh, the lovely woman, the lovely tour guide said to Brady, she goes, you know, the roller coaster, the real physical, she goes, it right. only lasts 26 seconds. So you realize okay. you wait in line on most days for hours to go on mm -hmm. a 26 second ride. Okay, that yes. aside. All right. I get on the virtual ride. It's five minutes. Yes. Four minutes of which I am dry heaving. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, I tell you, it, I yeah. had to close my eyes when I went on that ride, and it didn't help. I still yeah. felt violently ill. Yeah, you basically, for those of you who have never been on the Harry Potter ride, you're sitting in a bench that's attached to a robotic arm that just like it's the kind of robotic arm that paints cars at GM and it basically can twist the bench in any configuration. It takes you in front of all these screens and it's nauseating. And yeah. um it's not yeah. the robotic arm that's the problem. It's the screen and the film and your relationship to the film and the mm -hmm. movement. Like that mm -hmm. something is wrong. Can Ooh. I just say it's not the first rod there? Because the Simpsons rod always the made Simpsons me feel one like I was gonna every puke. single time. Oh, yeah. Why do they me. persist with this? 
Yeah. And I'm the only one that I can tell. So I get off, they say, oh, oh, here's one, here's one. You know, they're all like, you know, get a hook, get like a bucket for this guy. So if, oh. if we miss the first act exit, you know, the thing moves along. Yes. And I, my thing and I'm, and I'm, and I take my, uh, my, my plastic poncho and I use it to like not on other people. And then yes. they take, we have a, and, and my guide's there. She goes, we have a special place for you to recover. It's oh. an employee restroom with a bucket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They don't keep it that clean. I just want to say that right now. It's not filthy, but it's not like they painted it in many, many years. Okay. So I got up. Needless to say, the gourmet lunch was next. And mm. I, I told the woman, she she loved me, but not that much until I tipped her. But she, I said, you know, you should advertise Harry Potter as the new Ozempic because it makes you not want to eat anything. And I did not. <laughs> and then I avoided every other ride that was even minorly moving. The one thing I did love, which I've never, I've never played Mario Brothers. Ever. Oh yeah, I don't know what I have no experience with that intellectual property, so I don't know what that land is like. This but the whole land is so yeah. many bright colors. You you're immediately shot into happiness, and you actually are on a ride that's very on the ground spinning. Mm -hmm. But you're 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 killing things. You know, you're playing a video game. I thought that yes. took my mind off my. <gasps> Right. All right. Go to Harry Potter World at Universal Studios where you can throw <laughs> up. I can't believe you actually physically actually did throw up in your poncho. Very ingenious use of that. <laughs> Better than a Right. There's a name for, you know, the it, when you barf in elementary school and the janitor comes in and pours sawdust over it to sweep it up, that that product is called Whoops. So there should oh. be a <laughs> whoops. <laughs> whoops. A lot of whoops. Yeah. All yeah. right, let's move on. Number nine, James. Number nine. Number nine. So Daily Mail had a story this, this week about um, a couple who was flying first class, and they had a son, a six-year-old son, that they put into economy. And they asked a woman in first class if she would trade with the son so that the family could be together. No. Okay. The, the woman said no, rightly no. so. And there was an argument that ensued, and the, the family ended up being escorted off the plane because it got very violent and very caring like. Now, I had something recently that happened to me on a plane ride um, to Michigan last month, in mm. which I always get an aisle seat, always, 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 because I pee a thousand times and I'm up and down and da da da. So I do. Mm -hmm. And I had recently broken my arm and I, I was freshly out of the cast, but I was in a sling. So I wanted the aisle seat so I didn't get jostled, right? Well, a family comes in my aisle, a woman, a toddler, a, a woman, an infant, and then a three year old son in the father. And they said, Excuse me, would you mind switching with, with the father so that we can all sit together? And I said, no, no, I, I, no, I, I will not. You know, I have a broken arm. I, I need to sit in the aisle. And she mm -hmm. said, well, we all need to sit together. I'm sorry. And the father started getting huffy and puffy. And I said, no, I'm very sorry. No, 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 that's, that's not going to work for me. So they all sit down and they're very angry with me. And as mm. the plane takes off, the little boy says, my, why is that old man sitting there? And the mother says, it's a whole thing, Timmy. We'll just we'll talk about it later. And so then Timmy says, Daddy, Daddy's sitting behind in the window seat. And he said, Daddy, will you hand me this this toy? And the father said, Well, I can't very well do very much from back here now, can I? And I said very loudly, putting on my Karen voice, I said, Excuse me, is this going to be a problem? And I got very angry. And that sort of shut them all up for a little bit. But they were all very huffy and angry with me. Did I do the right thing? Yes. 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 It's not your responsibility, ethically or otherwise, to be kind of like the seat person for everybody who didn't have the uh, for, uh, forethought to family. figure out their seating before they got on the fucking plane. You have a family. It is up to you to make sure. It's up that to you. you. Honey, yes. why does a family have to sit together on a plane ride? It's not <laughs> like it. they're not going to die. They're not going to be like sort of suffer emotional trauma or damage. I, I understand the preference because I have a kid and we like to sit all in the same row, but we figure that out weeks in advance. Which I, is what no, you're I disagree. I'm like, 
Put the kids over there. I gotta sit over <laughs> here. Oh, good for you. Put the kids over you there, as in Fenton. coach. Yeah. You mean? I know you, Fenton. You are the fat. You are the two. You and and, and Billy are first class, and no <laughs> one sits his ass. And yeah, and yeah. Coach. So wait, yeah. the first story. Back it up. When you said the first class turned in, uh, the first story kind of you know fell into a debacle and an argument was, and the first class people had to be escorted off because they wouldn't give up their seats. Yeah, well, yeah, because they were the ones causing the problem with the woman who would not switch with them. And uh, my my theory on that is one of the one of the parents goes sit into in coach and brings the kid up front. If if the kid needs to be with a parent, then one yes. of the parents sacrifices and goes in back. I love the cheek of it though. That someone would give up their first class seat and go sit. Yeah, in no, coach. no, no. Wait, no. no I, as a six year old, I was my mother would t- take me to the airport, drop me off, and I had to <laughs> fly alone. I mean, I flew on my whole life. I was flying back and forth between Michigan and Florida. It was never a it, big deal. It builds character. It does. It's so Were there any words on landing? Did the did, what happened? Did you all make friends on the flight? Well, no, in fact, because um, we were all going to Charlotte, and I, for a minute, she said, "Well, when we get to the hotel, and there's like one hotel in Charlevoix, and I had this feeling that we were all going to be sitting around the pool together, just shooting darts at each other, but we did not see. I did not see them in Charlevoix once we got there. You can ask, but you can when you ask someone a question, you can expect a yes. Or a no. Or a no. <laughs> exactly. Or a no. I'm the really sorry, but we have to and... sit together. I yeah. love that. That passive aggressive, like, I'm sorry, James, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James, this is your response next time. You should have thought of that before you had kids. <laughs> yes. Ooh. I, I'm surprised you didn't bring up your P defense. That, I, I, that would shut yeah. it down completely. I have I have an uncontrollable bladder, and I need to be in an aisle seat. <laughs> it's that true. Work. It's true. I have a. Yeah. I have yeah. a. Yeah. I would have led with that. <laughs> All right. This is a very personal episode. Moving on to number <laughs> eight. Number eight. I'm going to regret telling you this story, but this is what happened. I was at dinner, and I opened the bottle of mineral water, and I was like, "That's odd." it feels like I got a splinter and it starts to itch. And then I noticed there's one on the other hand. I'm like, how did I get two splinters? The next morning I wake up, my palms are itching like crazy. And then I notice my feet are itching. Well, by about four o'clock in the afternoon, the weekend, because everything always goes wrong with your body on the weekend, you know? And I, so I go off to uh, the emergency room, like the urgent care. Well, first they try to tell me I've got syphilis. And I'm like, no, simply not possible. (laughs) 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 And they were like, well, are you sure? And I'm like, no, really, I'm sure. Um, And they were like, well, do you mind if we do some blood work? I was like, go ahead, knock yourself out. (laughs) But long story short, it turns out I had hand, foot, and mouth disease. What? I oh, would have preferred God. syphilis. I'm just saying right there. <laughs> well, right. Okay, break it down for people. Okay. Like, the, what specifically Wait, don't you what get that, that from, means? like, licking cow's butt? Yeah, something? I thought that was Here's a farm contamination. Only, yes, it's a cattle disease, primarily. Young kids get it, too. But what I didn't know, and I, believe me, I've Googled every possible variation of hand, foot, and mouth, hoof, and mouth, <laughs> adults can get it as well. And what's also kind of crazy is that although adults generally don't get it, they can also get it and not have any symptoms. So in that COVID type thing, they can have it and not know they have it. And did you know you can spread it by, you can spread it by breathing the virus, by your hands touching a doorknob, but wait, but how did, Swimming you, how did pools. you get it? And what, what are these symptoms? Okay. Well, the, the symptoms are you get a rash on your, I mean. Well, you have the itchy hands and feet. Yeah, really itchy and a nasty, yeah. a nasty rash. And it's, it's not just itchy, it's really painful. And it looks gross. It mm. really is repulsive looking. And then you, oh, you also get like a sore throat. You get ulcers in your mouth, um, a fever, body aches, headaches. I mean, it is. If you're one of the unlucky ones who gets it and gets symptoms, I can see you all Googling right now. It yes, is yes. the worst yes. thing 
WebMD says you may get a rash on the palms of your hands or soles of the feet one or two days after the first symptoms appear. Mm -hmm. So that's what you got. Yeah. And I had the presence of mind after being at the urgent care and they told me what it was. I They didn't say, oh, it's really infectious, but I just thought this isn't good. I'm just going to go to Palm Springs. So I went off and like sequestered myself. It was like, because, oh, this is the other thing. There's no treatment, no treatment at all. Like you just have to wait for it to pass. But you look fine now. How long does it last? It's like seven to 10 to 12 days. Yeah. Oh. What do you mean? Oh, you sound disappointed. I have no, suffered. No, no, no. Well, but isn't, it, isn't it like just six days later since the weekend? Yeah. It is. Well, no, no, it was a full week. Last week, I was out all last week in Pulse Oh, well, show yeah. us your mouth. Do you have any sores left? No, I do not. Look, I am sharing a very personal story. And there's nothing left on your hands or your feet? You're you're fine? Yeah, they've all dried out. I mean, Show us the hoof. The, show us the hoof. <laughs> 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 and mouth. The, the, actually, really, one of the nastiest bits of it is, is what is officially called desquamification, which basically means your skin, you know, after you've had this, the skin peels off. It's just really awful. So the reason I'm telling you this is because my doctor called me on Monday and said, look, sorry, this is what you got. There's nothing you can do. Just stay isolated, blah, 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 blah. Okay. He said, it's spreading a lot. He said, there's <gasps> a lot of it around. So um, the only we thing- We just gotta wash our hands and sanitize our hands. Every the washing of the hands, yes. No you more- know, Don't touch your and butt. stick your finger up your nose, you know. Is that the most embarrassing disease you've ever had? I think it probably is, actually. Yeah. Wait, no. What you had about the butt worms? What? I haven't had butt worms. I had, I had, um, when I was oh, 21 and I came back from Provincetown, I had crabs. Oh, I've had crabs oh, before. And I didn't, and they, I didn't they, know what that was. And I was so embarrassed. I thought it was dandruff and it, it walked around. No, they, yeah, dandruff. they are. They look like little crabs. I know. I told my mother I got them from sleeping in a um in a, a bad hotel. Oh, <laughs> but, but that, that wasn't it. <laughs> That's only the half of it. But... <laughs> I was sleeping with a man in a bad hotel. I had sex with a gentleman in a bad hotel. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break, and when we come back, <laughs> we'll talk about completely different subjects. Uh, you're listening to Wear Report here on Radio Andy yeah. Blake. Have you got a question? I do. Who said this? I've been popular and unpopular, successful and unsuccessful, loved and loathed, and I know how meaningful it all is. Therefore, I feel free to take whatever risks I want. Me. Intriguing. Yeah. Name that quote. Uh, we'll be right back after the break. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wear Report. I'm Fenton here with Tom and James and Alec, our special guest, and of course. Hello. Blake. Hi. Um, I asked, who said this? I've been popular and unpopular, successful and unsuccessful, loved and loathed, and I know how meaningful it all is. Therefore, I feel free to take whatever risks I want. Alec Mappa. Close. Madonna. Yes. Oh. Wow. Oh, very wow! That well, you didn't even hesitate there, because he knows his Madonna. Was it? Was I right? Yeah. Oh, I was just guessing, but <laughs> that, that sounds like something it tracks, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very good. We're counting down the top ten things a week that made us go wow. We've reached number seven. Number seven. I need your guys' help. I don't want to go off on a political tangent, but I tried to watch the Republican debate mm. the other night. Mm -hmm. And the most, I went off and on, I gotta be honest with you, cause I'm not used to watching Fox. I'm not used to watching cable news and just the wrappings. Once I watched the NFL games with my brother and sister and everything's so like hunger games, everything's just so produced when you're not used to it. It's so scary. Mm -hmm. um, Adam, Michael Pressman's husband, Adam Woods, wrote this on his, on his Facebook, which I thought was really insightful. And then you can jump in. But he goes, watching Republicans argue with themselves and boo each other is fascinating. The audience dislikes several of the candidates, but mm -hmm. the common enemies seem to be judges, public education, trans people, and immigrants. Did you guys watch any of it or any of the yes. coverage after? Um, yeah. Did anybody... Well, DeSanto said that creepy smile. 
Yeah, the lizard smile. Yes. yes. Yeah. Vivek and, Ramaswamy um, mm -hmm. is fascinating to me because he started off and he had like a, a cheering section and the audience ate up every single one of his canned responses. He knew what he was doing. He's an oil, slick, oil, you know, slimy uh, used car salesman is yep. what I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, DeSantis was creepy. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I hate to say it. I'm just going to come out and say it. I like Chris Christie. <laughs> I think he's the only one out of all of them that I actually could see myself not voting for maybe, but not hating him. If not hating him. him. But yeah. he's, I don't think that he was the one who was booed a great yeah, deal. He was, he was booed yeah. more than anyone else. Yeah. Nikki Haley had some, got, got some jabs in my favorite thing of the evening. <laughs> Was Ron DeSantis telling the story about the woman named Penny that he met? I don't know if you caught this. A woman who survived multiple abortion attempts and whose grandmother found her in a pan. <laughs> okay. Now, so my new single, Penny from the Pan, <laughs> is dropping <laughs> this week. And my new drag persona is she's French. Her name is Penny from Dupont. <laughs> Dupont. Oh, bon from Dupont. Yeah. Tom, you um, said you couldn't get through it, right? Did you? I went in and out, and I've been reading about it today and watching clips. But it's hard just to sit there and watch it because it feels they're so angry, they're so against what we think, and they and the other side must feel the same way when they watch a Democratic. But it's like it's so full of hate and and judgment. And I don't know if you saw, though, that Vivek Ramaswamy jumped five points this morning mm. and uh, DeSantis fell three. And now Vivek is in second place behind uh, Trump. Right. I thought my prejudice toward women, but I thought Nikki Haley actually present in that pack presented yeah. herself as different because they were literally Pence. And everyone, they were wearing the exact same clothes. Mm. It was like they yeah, were in Trump like an oversized suit red ties yeah. and they stand in that Trumpian sort of weird way. But it's I like they, they, were, they were the Republican heirs or something like they were like a fifties doo-wop group that yeah. were dressed, you know, identically. I was, I was lobbying in Capitol Hill for a, for a, um, for a kids rights and foster care several years ago. And there's so many gay guys who work in the Capitol and you could tell between the straight men and the gay guys, all the gay guys had fitted tailor suits that just were impeccably put together. And all the straight guys were in that awful men's warehouse, baggy, <laughs> ill-fitting suit that just says, please don't ever think of me in a sexual way. Here's it's my new theory. Really based in Washington, why all this hatred? Like, why can't they just fix it? Because, it, but you know, you guys, this is yeah. nothing new. I mean, we're yeah. all the kind of like in the same kind of circa age where we remember the '80s with the moral majority, with that awful Patrick Buchanan giving that terrible speech at the uh, <laughs> at the Republican convention. It's kind of like they use queer people and people who are othered as a mm. wedge issue to kind of make their point. And they're going to keep doing it until it doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Yes. Here's my, here's my closing thought, last theory. My brother was saying maybe Mitt Romney will run as a third candidate, but he says he won't. But I think Trump, who wasn't there last night, is going to end up being the third candidate. Like, I think he's going to write in his own party and the Republicans, so hopefully, that's my hope, that they balance each other, they knock each other oh. out. Pray about that. Pray on that. Pray on that. All right. All right. Yes. All right. Number six. Number six. I watched Blood, Sex, and Royalty on Netflix. I don't know if you guys have seen this. Mm -mm. It's a series in which every season they do a royal scandal from history. And this was, it's a three episode series, docu-series. Um, this was about Anne Boleyn, mm. um, which I thought would be fascinating. It is done in this um, uh, weird gossip girl sort of way where they do reenactments, but they do that flea bag thing where they will stop and then turn towards the camera and break the fourth wall. And mm. they speak that the whole thing, they speak in like 21st century slang and they, it's all done to a rap electronic soundtrack. Mm. And you think that it's, it's very much for the kids. It's teaching history to the children. It's just absolutely terrible though. It's oh, like a gossip <laughs> girl. They try very hard, but the but the period costumes look like Renaissance fair costumes. They're really <laughs> the hairdos are like 21st century. It, the only reason I watched it was because 
the guy who played Henry VIII, his name is Max Parker, and he's this hot ginger. He is mm. so handsome, and mm. he is so good, and I hope that he breaks out. I just wanted to say I watched it so that you don't have to. Um, I like the story. If you want to know about Anne Boleyn, watch Anne of a Thousand Days with Richard Burton, mm. 1969. Did you watch Tudors? I did watch the Tudors. Yes, yeah. I like that too. That that was very good. You Y'all watch have... Tudors? Tudors. I thought you said Cooters. Y'all watch Cooters? <laughs> <laughs> but j- 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 just seek out Anne of a Thousand Days. It was Jean Vivier Bujold is Anne Boleyn. It's very good. Oh, or see Blake or Tom. What was the um the sixth that is out now? Remember the 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 um, musical Broadway? six. The musical six. Yes. Six yes. is excellent. Yes. 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 Oh, they, they, that call, Benson, right? they call that genre programming, um, James, uh, the yassification of history. It, it's, it is very, yeah. it's something yeah. that World of Wonder would have done 20 years ago, <laughs> mm-hmm. I think. During a drag it challenge. It would have been very innovative 20 years ago, but now it is just, it is mm-hmm. now. Right. Okay, skip it. That's Blood, Sex, and Riley on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Number five. Number five. Did you guys read, uh, it's a Musk read, Ronan Farrow's piece on Elon Musk in The New Yorker? I saw the yeah. interview about it on yeah. MSNBC, and I had no idea that he had that story, but please. It's elaborate. a long It's a long piece. New York is known for long pieces. It's really fascinating. Some of it, I suppose, has been known before, like, But when you put all the pieces together, the conclusion is somewhat terrifying. (laughs) You suddenly realize that the uh, space aerospace future of America is entirely in the hands of one man. One man who seems to be doing a lot more special K lately, um, in addition to quite a lot of Ambien, and who, you know, as we've seen with the Twitter or the X or whatever you want to call it, has been making a lot of what might seem chaotic, impulsive decisions. Mm -hmm. So this article really drills down on Starlink and how Starlink is the, well, Elon Musk says it's rebuilding the internet in space because his idea is launch a ton of satellites and give people all over the world internet connectivity. What's wrong with that? Sounds like a great idea. He has launched (laughs) <laughs> there are, I think there's something like 7,000 satellites in orbit in total. <gasps> Four, over 4,000 of them are his satellites that he has launched with Starlink. He plans to launch 42,000 satellites. Mm. And you're like, hang on a second, who gave him permission? Had it, like, since when was space just there for the taking? And aren't they all going to like bump into each other and it's just going to be a bunch of space debris in the- Yeah, in the- they, they're supposed to last about five years and then they're supposed to burn up on re-entry. But there's a pollution issue that there's a light yeah. pollution issue from all these satellites. There's a, a pollution of when they burn up and what kind of chemicals they- Plus though, Musk came to the rescue in the Ukraine war. Yes, I will provide you with Starlink. So the Ukrainians were able to like get internet access and- sort out their drones and get intelligence. But then after a few months, Musk was like, oh, hang on a second, I'm not gonna do this for free. And also is chatting to Putin and is like saying, oh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. he's he's not pro-Ukrainian, no. So certainly the Americans and the Ukrainians are having to deal with this guy like he's like a president or something. And he wanted something like, $400 $400 million a year for the internet service. Like, I'm like, okay. I mean, yeah, they're in the middle of a, a, a civil war. I mean, they're in the middle of a war, a revolutionary war. Well, they can't do that. His thing was, of course, that he wants his technology to be used for peaceful ends, not for war. No, he doesn't. No, no, no. no I don't buy that for right. a second. No. I feel like he's the Howard Hughes of our generation. Like, mm-hmm. he's a couple of years away from wearing Kleenex boxes on his feet. Yeah. Yeah. And watching everybody from a, a, a closed circuit TV. He's gonna go bananas. It's it's a deeply disturbing piece, but it's it's definitely well worth a read. And 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 I have to say, you know, Ronan writes a good piece, you know, it's mm. very like um yeah. The, there's a great quote in it that's perhaps the most chilling thing of all. Someone says, a colleague of his, or or someone says, he definitely wants to save the world, but only if he can save it. 
Yeah, o- yeah. only if he can run it. Yeah. Some. Oh. All right. Let's take a quick break. Uh, Drag Race Germany is coming with Bobby Breakout and Gianni Jovanovic. And, of course, the marvelous Diane Brill as resident Woo! judge. Can't it's wait. September 5th on Wow Presents Plus. Uh, you can meet the Queens of Drag Race Germany now on the Wow Report. And you can also be watching new episodes of Drag Race Down Under, Drag Race Philippines, Drag Race France, and Drag Race Mexico all this week. Oh, Drag Race Brazil comes August 30th. So there you go, wowpresentsplus.com. Blake, have you got a question? I certainly do. We had a very strange weather occurrence this past weekend. I think we're going to talk about it in a little bit. A hurricane. Um, But when was the last time there was a tropical storm in Los Angeles? I think this is a trick question. We'll have the answer right after the break here on The Wow Report on Radio Andy. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wire Report. Fenton here with Alec, our very special guest, Tom, Hi. and James, and of course, Blake. Hi. Uh, we had a tropical storm, tropical storm. Hillary, we finally saw that blue wave, guys. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, when was the last tropical storm in LA? Madonna. <laughs> no, that was the, uh, uh, no, got it. Well, we yeah. know that FDR was in charge, I believe, at the time. Tom? I know because my brother kept saying it like 19 times while we oh, were okay. at this theme park. Do you want me to tell you? It was 1939. That's right. 84 years ago. Wow. Crazy. Crazy. 39's a great year. A lot of great movies came out. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wizard of Wizard Oz, of Gone with the Wind, Gone Goodbye, Mr. Wind, Chips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, look at this knowledge, the knowledge, yeah. the things you can learn on this show. Mm-hmm. We're counting down the top 10 things of the week that made us go, wow, we've reached number four. Number four. I often reserve number four for our rest in peace segment. This is a gentleman who I only knew by name until he passed away. And then I, did, I read the obituaries and his name, he passed away in his, well, deep into his 80s, David Jacobs who was the creator and executive producer of Dallas and Knott's Landing. Oh. What I found fascinating and kind of a tale, kind of a world of wonder tale, he's not queer or anything, but he started off, he, he wanted to be, he was sort of like a prodigy in the piano, but then he went to college for it and he wasn't good enough. And then he wanted to do something else and he wasn't good enough. So he started writing and he wasn't good enough. So he ended up writing for magazines you know, deep into his like late twenties, he got married. He was married for a long time. She divorced him. She took the, she took the daughter to LA and he thought, you know, I'm going to come to LA too. But his wife who had become a literary agent, he said, get me work. And it turns out by writing magazine articles back in the late sixties, early seventies, gave him a really good kind of way to write treatments, you know, to sort of sensationalize and capture people and voices. So he did one show. He like fixed some like, Scorpio or some awful 70s private thing. He ended up getting bumped into um, Aaron Spelling and, and Len Goldberg's family with Sadie Thompson and Christy McNichol. And he just had a reputation. So he ended up partnering um, with, I just want to get the names, Michael Fillerman over at Lorimar. They got a deal. And he wrote, he wanted to write um, a thing about it, sort of like a neighborhood and gossip and women and like life and stakes, but all in, in, in the suburbs. And so CBS was trying to develop something for Linda Evans, who would go on to dynasty fame. And so they made it a Linda Evans project. It was an ensemble, but Linda Evans project. And it was called Linda Evans. And they said, well, one of the notes was, could you make it feel a little more uh, like, like family saga and a little more American? So he goes, I'll oh. set it in Dallas. Which, by the way, is not, you know, Houston is where oil is produced and the oil business. It's not in Dallas. But he said, no one's going to know. And then right before they were going to they were going to deliver the script, Linda Evans was no longer interested in doing an ensemble. She wanted to do a star vehicle. So they ripped off the first page. They wrote Dallas, put it on the first page, and they sent it. And with it, and they, they read it at CBS. They loved it. They ordered three more scripts. And before he could blink, they'd made the miniseries to Dallas, which led wow. to... Um, I think 14 seasons 
and like 350 episodes. Bobby, so, what are you doing in the shower? You're dead. Amazing. Amazing. I think, I think after a couple of years, he kind of got pulled out of it. You know, the, the other people took, you know, he was, he was always part of it, always get residuals, but he was, he had some free time. So they're like, well, let's do a spinoff of Dallas. And so he went back to his original treatment, which was set in the suburbs and he, and he called it Knott's Landing. Mm. And he took Gary Ewing and Val Ewing, whose storylines did not impact the history of Dallas, mm -hmm. put them in the cul-de-sac, and they had another 14-year, 350 episodes. Amazing. Amazing. I Amazing. never watched Knott's Landing. Did you guys no. watch it? Did, were you not I, I watched it peripherally. I was, I was more a dynasty person. Yes. But sure. um, I recently – nobody – this generation will never know the thrill of having to wait for a network television program <laughs> at the appointed time. And, yeah. and, and all of us kind of in a, you know, breathless in anticipation. But I, and the, right the, 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 yeah, and the, um, the, the cliffhangers that you had to right. wait three and a half months or right. who shot jr it was like yeah. six months you had to not to be out. contrary right. but i think actually that will come back i think that yes i think they'll find well, a way i uh recently right before the strike i did a christmas movie for lifetime that stars linda evans oh. uh, donna mills oh. lonnie, lonnie anderson oh. and morgan fairchild wow Oh, oh, like, cool. oh, oh, and Nicolette Sheridan. Um, no. It is it is a Christmas movie about all these '80s divas who come together for a lifetime for a reunion on live television. That Hilarious. sounds fantastic. Yeah. And I play Morgan Fairchild's agent, and that comes oh. out at this time. Yeah, I will go deeper on this another show mm. if I haven't already. I love to tell the story, but I won't do it today. But the okay. difference between Dallas and Knott's Landing is Dallas was guy TV. And the end would be like, who shot JR? There'd be a shot and then a slump and then executive producer Philip Capice. Knott's Landing was run by the gays and was, all, it was like a Betty Davis, Joan Crawford movie, those storylines. And there was an epi excellent episode, I'll gladly tell any of you, where, Don, where, where this guy gets killed and Donna, as, as the next to last episode, and Donna Mills thinks her daughter did it. So the entire last episode is Donna Mills trying to dispose of the body secretly in order to protect her daughter. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> That's Mary Lana Turner. Yes, she's uh, protecting the daughter from Johnny Stompanato. Johnny Don't worry, Stompanato. baby. I'll take mommy. will take care of everything. Take care of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to say very quickly, Alec, that um uh, uh Morgan Fairchild has one of the greatest Twitter uh, Twitter exes. She's, she's fantastic. I, She's so good on social media. I love her so much. I love all of those women, but Morgan especially. This is my favorite involved. Morgan Fairchild story. We were doing Worst Cook Celebrity Edition. Not one to throw around my credits. But we were on the, on the way to set in the van, and she was in full beat and hair, already made up and everything. I said, Morgan, don't you know there's a whole team of people there that will make you up any way you like? And she goes, I know, but I already know how to look like Morgan Fairchild. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. Rest in perfection. I said, David, again. Rest in perfection, David Jacobs. You can read more on the Wire Report. We're now moving on to number three. <gasps> Number three. My earthquake story, I just wanted to very quickly say, you know, that I, I know I've talked on this show about how my neighborhood, Hancock Park in Los Angeles, if there is a stiff wind, we lose electricity. If it's more than 10 miles an hour, I, you know, I, I have to leave town essentially. And so I was very worried when the, when the news came that this was coming and I had my emergency drag bag already next to, you know, the, 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 the door in case I had to decamp to my sister. Nothing happened. I was very, I was very relieved. I had my cookies and candles and uh, special K just in case I had to, you know, I had, to, if I had to live in the dark for a while, um, <laughs> There was a moment there where all of a sudden the bed started shaking and my bookcases started shaking. And I thought that the, the, the uh, my apartment was going to collapse into the garage. I thought it was the floods were coming and I was about to die. But that turned out to be the earthquake, which was God making fun of all of us. Um, I know, Fenton, you were in Palm Springs. In Palm I, Springs. I guess where the, the hurricane landed. There was no... Yes. Feel, but it was very anticlimactic. I, it was a hard to take a picture that would look on Instagram like something was going on other than a light rainfall. Wait, um, so, but you because I know most of all Palm Springs lost electricity. You didn't yeah. lose electricity? Nope. No? It, it flickered once. 
and there was like one gust of wind. I mean, I was very lucky. I was in Palm Springs, and I think Cathedral City got more washed out. Yeah. Um, Thank but God. But when you all the highways in and out get, get flooded, you couldn't leave Palm Springs? Well, no, I mean, you could, yeah. Like the, uh, the, the Highway 111 was a little bit washed away. I mean, it does happen from time to time, but... Yes, as Tom says, thank goodness. I mean, because it, you know, it's always, I suppose everyone's like, it's always complaining. Oh, well, it wasn't dramatic enough, but it, thank goodness we were all warned. And yeah, I wasn't. know. There, there was nothing. There was all hype and no delivery. Yeah, I've gotten yeah. more wet at a car wash. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, did you have any stories at all? It's very, it was just... I, my balcony, which is flat, got flooded and it seeped through my window and it damaged some of my flooring and a piece of art. So I am Devastated. the victim. Of the yes, James. When the hurt, when the quake happened, and your bed sh shook, and your books were all around you, did you scream a little bit? Was there a girl who screamed? I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's a twister. It him. It him. <laughs> Don't spill the cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most oh. action my bed has gotten in decades. <laughs> all right, let's go to number two. Number two. Yeah, good to see Rudolf Giuliani's mugshot being arrested. Oh, boy. And, and reason, yesterday we got Trump as well. Yeah. I haven't yeah. seen the mugshot yet, but I saw the the triptych with, with all of them, all, all nine of them together, like the Brady Bunch. And I, I, I tweeted and I put on my Instagram that they all look like Scooby-Doo villains. You know, that yes. part where they take the demask everybody. And it's like, oh, it's it's Mr. Giuliani. I saw them all done as Batman villains, and that was very funny. That, oh, yeah, that's yeah. my fave too. But one of the ironies of this whole thing is that he is being one of the sort of charges against him is is a Rico. They're using the Rico statute against him. Yes. And the interesting Love thing it. about Rico is that it was passed in 1970. It was a basically an anti-mafia thing where mm -hmm. if you commit two acts of fraud within a 10-year span, all your assets get frozen. Everything you own is just taken away. And of course, Rico is special because Giuliani used it in his campaign against Wall Street. And he used it against Drexel Burnham Lambert, the junk bond bank where I used to work. And because of using Rico, he basically forced them into bankruptcy. And so it's just a rich irony and a satisfying one to see him now being, what's the word? Just getting a taste of his own medicine. I yeah, guess. yeah. Yep. I just want to point out for our, our viewers that Rico was also the bartender and love of Lola in uh, the song. Uh, it, it was Cold also Cabana. Rico Suave. Cold he was Cabana. very suave, yeah. and he yeah. was. A, it was a song by Gerardo in 1989. Yeah. and it's like, like there's a lot of there's a lot of Ricos. Rico actually. has always been with us. <laughs> 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 and the reason I even mention that is because there's a book out called Witness to a Prosecution, The Myth of Michael Milken, which tells you kind of for the first time how Giuliani went after Milken and how mm. Milken really actually was kind of a good guy. And now I think we can see that Giuliani mm. was kind of the evil guy and oh, clearly building a political career. Of course, interesting. It's a self-promoting item because this is my first book, Fall from Grace, which tells that story, oh, what, 30 years ago. Well done. That's Bosky, right? You did, it's the Ivan Bosky yes, story. It's yes, the Ivan, it's the, you know, the movie Wall Street sort of based on that sort of insider okay. trading crusade. And for, for a long time, Giuliani was the hero of it and seen as cleaning but, up. But let people. me just say that as an old New York nightclubber, I knew from way back when that Giuliani on his, um, uh, the what it was it, the Saving Grace or how it, the quality of life campaign yeah. that he did in the early 90s where he cleaned up Times Square and tried to take down all the nightclubs and yeah. Peter Gation. Yes, I, I was very much aware of what a scumbag he was. Exactly. He moment. definitely yeah. used causes that the public would go along with to advance his own mm -hmm. political yeah. ambition. Yeah, very much like um, Roy Cohn. Very, very much, yes. you know. Yeah. Right. 
But he had a real opportunity for 9-11 to be his lasting legacy. Remember Mm -hmm. when he was America's mayor and Mm -hmm. everybody saw him as a big hero. And Mm -hmm. it's like, it's just, it just, it seems unfortunate and sad that he's going to die on this. It's absolutely Shakespearean, the fall that he had. Yeah, Engineered his own downfall. The cold opening of Night Live, the week they were back Mm -hmm. on the air after Mm 9-11, Lauren Michaels turned to Mayor Giuliani and says, is it okay to laugh again? And he goes, Why start now? Yeah, because yeah, he could, he could, he could have said goodbye, <laughs> thank you, right, right, right. peace out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, vanity. yeah. it's weird. Yeah. We're gonna vanity, take vanity, me. all is vanities. Oh. we're gonna take one more break, and when we come back, reveal the number one thing this week that made us go out. I think if you're watching or listening, you might have a clue who or what it is. We'll be right back. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome back to the Wow Report. It's Fenton here with Tom and James. And we have been counting down the top 10 things of the week that made us go wow. We can finally reveal our number one. I'm hearing from producers that we're over time. We have to go straight. Oh, yeah. oh like you. That. Come on now. Number one is Alec Mappa. <laughs> Hello. Number one. I'm going to London. I'm going to be performing in London in October, October 9th at 9 p.m. Uh, I'm doing stand up in London for the very first time in wow. Soho at a place called the Crazy Cocks. Crazy oh. Cocks. It's spelled Crazy Cox, C O Q S. You can get tickets now at Brasserie Zedel, Z E D E L dot com. And it'll be my it'll be my uh, London debut. I'm very excited. And I'm going because this entire uh, town is a ghost town. Nobody's working. And I figured as long as we're striking, I'm going to hit the road again. So my first stop is London. And I'm very excited. I love you in London. I can't believe you I haven't been there yet. Everybody listening, if you go to the Crazy Cox on your Instagram, Crazy Cox, C-O-Q-S, you can find links to buy tickets. You can find uh, information on my Instagram as well, at Alec Mappa, October 9th. Tell everybody, tell everybody you've ever met. I'm already starting to sell tickets, so I'm very excited. We'll post a link uh, to the tickets in London on the WOW Report, too. Thank you so mm. much. Thank you yes, so Alex, much. You were also you've been marching for for the, for the WGA and the. I've been the... marching in solidarity. Uh, the closest uh, studio to me is Disney, and mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. at my very first march, I marched right next to John Hamm. Wow! And I I got to see the package that everybody's talking about. And Ham Hog. It, it's um it's the best package I've seen since David Duchovny when I did a movie with did him. Did he see you look, checking it out? Uh, no, but Duchovny did. And he said to me, take a picture. It lasts longer. And I said, listen, if you don't want me to stare at that, you're going to have to put out both my eyes with a fork because <laughs> it looked like a baby's arm holding on to another baby's arm, holding on to a small pumpkin. So, um, of course, I was the only person who was like, I got to run ahead. So I ran ahead of John Ham and looked back. And uh, I was probably really obvious about it, but. Who cares? Who am I protecting at this point? <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who? You can't hide from the cosmos. Yeah. Um, I've seen Sarah Silverman. I saw uh, uh, Hannah Einbinder from oh, Hat. Yeah, sure. Um, It really is a who's who of the unemployed here in what Hollywood. Is, what is picket line etiquette? I mean, do you chat amongst yourselves? Do you like- we chat amongst ourselves. It's uh, um, It depends on the route. Like in Universal, they've done everything they can to make it difficult. There was shade and Universal uh, trimmed all the trees so there's no shade. And now they're working on the sidewalks. So it's harder to march in front of Universal. It's very, very awful. Um, uh, but the culture on Warner Brothers is very crowded. I went to the Latino March. There was a drum circle. And, uh, oh gosh, everybody was there. And there were free tacos. That was very exciting. I'm Filipino, so I love free food. But Disney's the best because it's a mile straight around. There's a lot of shade. And if you do five laps around the studio, you get your laps in for the day. <laughs> That's your cardio. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're union strong. We're all holding out for the right things. Because back in the day, you could do two guest starring things on a, a sitcom or a, or a drama show and be able to last for the next couple of months. And now that's that's yeah. no longer the case. That's so true. we're we're striking so that we can be paid an equitable wage. 
And the AI is coming too, boy. It's yeah, a, my a, sign yeah. that I carry around says AI can't overact the way I do. Oh. <laughs> oh. And so my true. favorite writer sign that said uh, uh, AI didn't go to fat camp. <laughs> 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 so come see me spread the word i'll be in london in october october 9th at the crazy cox we'll and be on the lookout for the lifetime with with morgan and then that's uh, right at christmas time yeah I'll, see that's very exciting i'll mm -hmm. post a link to buy tickets to your london show on the wow report thank you really blake close. i really appreciate that you guys thank you so much well alec thanks for coming come again Absolutely. anytime i shall I, please and uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you, James. Thank you, Blake. And thank you all out there for listening. Same time, same place next week. Until then, go out and do something that makes the world go. Wow. wow. Oh, wow.